four, three, zero, and liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis as Columbus sets sail on a voyage of science to the space station. That is a February 2008 launch of Space Shuttle Atlantis. The crew included NASA astronaut Leland Melvin, one of just over 550 people ever to travel to space. But Melvin's path into orbit sets him apart, you could say. He was a standout wide receiver at the University of Richmond. The Detroit Lions chose him in the 1986 NFL draft. That makes him the only person in history to be drafted by a pro football team and fly in space. <laughs> Melvin tells his remarkable story in this new book, Chasing Space, an astronaut story of grit, grace, and second chances. It is also available in a young reader's edition. Leland Melvin. Great to have you here. Great to be here. Thank you. So let's just start with the obvious. I mean, how did you do this? Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. It was a lot of people that had my back when I failed. And my mother, mother and father always told me, you can do anything you put your mind to. And so when I went to NASA, you know, I was working at NASA, and a friend of mine said, you'd be a great astronaut. I was like, yeah, right. And then another friend of mine got into the astronaut corps, and I told myself, well, if that knucklehead can get in, I can get in. <laughs> so I applied after he got in, and I got in. But you never thought you could be an astronaut because you said you didn't see it at Black Astronaut growing right. up. Right, 69, Neil and Buzz walking on the moon, these buzz cuts. I, that wasn't me. I wanted to be Arthur Ashe. Uh -huh. He trained right down the street from where I lived in Lynchburg, Virginia, on Pierce Street by Dr. Worldwind Johnson. And so he had character. He was intelligent. He was athletic. He was a great person. I wanted to be him. Much admired American. Yeah. But science uh, was a favorite subject of yours as a child. Right? Well, because my mother gave me a chemistry set that was non-OSHA certified, age inappropriate, and I created an explosion in her living room, <laughs> and that activated my brain to be a scientist. Yeah. But I love, I love one of your favorite entries in your journals is take extravagant pleasure, listen to that, take extravagant pleasure in being alive when you're up there. You said nothing really prepares you for what you see once you're up in, in space. Yeah, you see these colors of the Caribbean. I mean, you almost need new definitions of blue to describe these colors, azure, indigo, navy, you know, and it's just turquoise and these coral reefs, brim, you know, brimming with life. And I just, it just kind of blew my mind. But on your path to becoming an astronaut, you had a very bad hearing, uh, ear injury, and they told you, look, you'll never be able to get into space. Yeah, the doctor said, you'll never fly because we don't know what happened to you. I was in a training accident in this six million gallon pool, and they forgot to put this little pad in my helmet that would allow me to clear my ears. And when I was going to the different memorial services for the Columbia crew, the chief flight surgeon watched me clear my ears as we took off and landed, and he signed me a waiver to fly because he said, I believe in you. Yeah. Oh, wow. But it's more than that. I mean, you have to have some skills. You have to have yeah. some well, more than just grit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, being an astronaut, they say, it's it, one of the exactly. hardest tests the hardest to get job. through. You have yeah. to right. I mean, you had a lot going for you in terms of, of the raw skills that are necessary. Well, I think the, the football training in the NFL, you know, that teamwork, that dedication, that discipline, you know, you know, the hard practices, coming back from those hard practices and continuing to, to play is something that helped model the astronaut training program because it was long days, many years, and, you know. It's been a while since we sent a man to the moon. Right. Uh, the young generation doesn't necessarily understand or appreciate NASA. One of your missions is to make them understand. My mission is to take the experiences that I had in space, seeing this incredible planet going around it every 90 minutes, seeing the sunrise and the sunset every 45, and bring that down to the classroom so the kids can say, wow, I can do that. And that, that guy looks kind of like me. Maybe I can be an astronaut. And that's why I give them these patches, astronaut, STEAM, Explorer, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics, mm -hmm. so they can be or do anything. You get to take stuff in space with you. What did you take? Oh, I took my mom and dad's uh, wedding ring. Nice. Um, I took a baseball cap from the University of Richmond. And a Curious George book. Curious George. That surprised me. Yeah. That was my guy, you know. He that kept me, he got me in trouble. Curious but, George know. was your guy? <laughs> the Little Engine That Could and Curious George. Those were my favorite books, too. Yeah, Leland Melvin, wonderful to have you here. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> and Chasing Space is on sale now. And you can hear more of our CBS This Morning on our podcast. Find extended interviews and podcast originals on iTunes and Apple's podcast app.